Let's get into the Word this morning as we talk about experiencing Christmas. Give up on perfection. <laughs> That's an interesting title this morning. We're going to use Matthew chapter 1. We'll start with verse 20 and read down through verse number 25. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with, a ch with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not until she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Amen. You know, really, when you think about Christmas, the first Christmas was a package of miracles. Uh, when you look at it in the context of what God did, what did the package contain, Pastor? Well, I saw three things that this, pa that this package contained. First was a virgin birth. God clothing himself in human flesh, what we call or know as God incarnate, condescending, coming down for an express purpose. So in this package... This Christmas package, we find here's a virgin birth, something that happened that was unbelievable, but it had to be from God because it was a miracle, because Mary was a young virgin. You know what was so miraculous? I believe she was also a virgin after she had birthed Jesus into this world. Folks, that's a miracle within itself. And so the second thing I see, the Father giving his amazing love to an undeserving world. John 3, 16 is written all over that. God gave what we didn't deserve. And I'm one that says, praise the Lord, I'm glad he did it. Because without him, we'd have no hope, would we? And then third, Christ making himself poor that we might be rich. He came and humbled himself and died on a cross later, gave his life that we could have life as the word of God says and have it more abundantly. Now, when we experience Christmas, we experience the vastness of three great things. The first thing is the vastness of God's love. God's love is all summed up, as I said a second ago, in John 3 and 16. What is it? John, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. Thank the Lord for that. The second thing is the vastness of God's grace. Oh, not only did we get God's love, but we got the vastness of his grace. We all needed God's grace. That all came through the Lord Jesus Christ, because our best wasn't good enough. But thank God, his best was more than enough. Amen. We are all tainted. We are all infected with sin. But God's grace became our cure in what we call the acrostic of the word grace, G-R-A-C-E, God's riches at Christ's expense. Then third vastness that we find is the vastness of God's character. Uh, the coming of Jesus revealed the very character of God, of who he is and what he would do in a life. So Christ is the invisible image or is the visible image of the invisible God. Uh, you know, thank God that Jesus came. Thank God that he provided. The character of the Father is expressed character as we see in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because of Christmas, every child of God can know today with certainty God is with me right here and right now. And the neat thing is, he never leaves you, nor does he forsake you. What a promise from the Lord. Christmas has a way of kind of slipping up on you, doesn't it? Here it is, the eighth day of December, and man, before you know it, you're going to have all the family around the tree and, and tearing into those gifts and eating the big feast at the table and Oh, what a celebration that's going to be. But man, it's really slipping up on us, and it has a way of doing that. The air is filled with the sights, the sounds, the songs, and the story of Christmas. Uh, this Christmas, it just keeps your heart all mixed with, uh, your mind mixed with feelings about the Lord and what he did for us. And it just touches our heart to be able to really enjoy this season and see that Jesus is the gift of Christmas. 
as has been said a million and one times, that Jesus is the reason for this season. And he really is. Paul said it this way in 2 Corinthians in chapter 9 and verse 15. He says, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Now, how do we unwrap this gift of Christmas really today? One, receive the gift. Today in Romans 6 and 23, it tells us the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Man, you just receive him into your heart and your life, and that's how you unwrap the gift of Christmas. And isn't it awesome? This gift just keeps on giving, doesn't it? It gives you grace for every day and gives you blessings beyond compare. Not only that, but also you can enjoy the gift. Man, I, I tell you, to be born again is the greatest thing in the world. Hallelujah. When, when you take the time to get to know the Lord Jesus Christ and to know God in a personal way today, you can delight in his presence. You can know our God is real. You are just not acquainted with him. You are in relationship with him. And then third, not only enjoy the gift, but thank God you can worship the gift. That's what we're here to do today, to worship the Lord. And so it's easy to get caught up in all the rush of Christmas. And I was reading some posts on different uh, uh, things that people had said yesterday and about, you know, people were in that shopping cart war and banging, you know, against people and trying to get that gift and going out and fighting and fuming and fussing over stuff. Man, it's not worth it. Amen. You need to enjoy the real gift by worshiping the real gift of Christmas that we become so caught up in all the hustle and bustle and the rush of Christmas, we fail to enjoy and we fail to miss the wonder of the worship that we can place before him. I'm going to tell you, when you worship the Lord, you'll experience the greatness of our God. Today we're going to see Joseph. Really, he gets left out many times in the story and the study of Christmas. You know, he's just the guy that kind of tagged along and was there for Mary. And of course, he did make headlines. He did have, you know, he's included in the picture in the nativity scene. He's not left out from that standpoint. He is mentioned in the scriptures. But a lot of times we just don't see the importance that Joseph played in the picture of what God was painting for us in Christmas. Everything in Joseph's life was really going well. Now, it, he was engaged to Mary. Mary was a very faithful, devout, and a hard-working girl. I mean, she had all the qualities that this young Jew guy could be looking for in a precious lady to be his wife the rest of his life. Joseph had a good name. He had a good future. He had a good business as a carpenter. He had done all the right things. Everything was in place. Everything looked perfect for his future. You ever had somebody or talked to somebody, or maybe you are that somebody, that had all your future planned out, and then God came around and turned it totally around. You're looking at one. I had my, my future all planned out of what I was going to do, and by the age of 55, I was going to be playing golf every day. Well, I tell you what, all that got turned around. Amen. You know, God has a way of changing your plans. But here's the neat thing about his change in our plans. His change for our plans is always a much better plan for us. Hallelujah. So here's everything going perfect in Joseph's life until the day Mary came with the news. Joseph, I'm pregnant. I hope he told, I hope she told him to sit down before she told him the news. Because if not, the dude would have passed smack out, I'm sure. Amen. But everything was perfect until Mary came by and said, Joe, guess what? I'm pregnant. <laughs> Joe, why are you looking at Cindy? Her name is not Mary. Amen. <laughs> Joe, I mean, Mary was pregnant. No, Joe wasn't. And the only thing Joseph knew was, I'm not the daddy. So, life of Joseph then got pretty messy, didn't it? You know, uh, that was not the way it was supposed to go. That totally interrupted his plans for his life. And this was not the way life was supposed to turn out. Have you ever been in that situation? But now for Joseph, everything had been turned upside down. Completely different. You know, life is like that sometimes, isn't it? 
we have our plans and we've got everything mapped out of what we're going to do and where we're going to be and how we're going to do it. And all of a sudden, something just totally, totally comes along and disrupts our plans, turns everything upside down, and where we were headed in one direction, now we're headed in another. We get a call then from a doctor and, or from a school principal or from a family member about an issue or problem or sickness or difficulty. And that's how it was with Joseph. With basically a couple words, things got messy. I'm pregnant. So for Joseph, everything was not okay. He didn't just say, well, such is life. <laughs> In Matthew 1.19 was Joseph's solution. The Bible says, Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. In other words, in the Jewish culture, and you're probably familiar with this, an engagement was a legal binding agreement. It was legally binding. It just, it was no way out of it. And to, the, the, to end the engagement would be similar or like getting a divorce. And so according to the law, Joseph could have actually had Mary taken out and, and uh, for being unfaithful and stoned to death to save his own reputation. I mean, you know, this just wasn't Mary on the line. Mary and Joseph, his reputation would be tainted. His business would be affected. His name would be tarnished. But Joseph chose to dismiss her quietly and because he wanted to keep both Mary and himself from public shame. Now, there's more to the story than just that. I believe when God gets involved in our life, he moves mightily in, in ways that we can't explain other than that he gives us peace to do what we do. This was Joseph's way, and he was seeking to clean up the mess of the situation that he was in. However, God says he will come, and he'll be a part of the mess. As a matter of fact, the mess for Joseph's life originated with God. And let me tell you what, God doesn't make a mess. God came with a miracle. And brother, I'm so glad today, and ladies and gentlemen, I'm so glad that Joseph, God, would move on his heart in such a way that he would not make a foolish human mistake, an error. You know, in, in, it is in Matthew that Jesus is given the name Emmanuel, and you know, as I know, as Isaiah proclaimed, that that means God with us. So that, this meant for Joseph that God was, with, was in that mess that his life had suddenly become. Uh, he, he had the presence of God with him. I'm glad to tell you today that same God that was with Joseph is the same God that's with you and I every day. He never leaves us, nor does he forsake us. God was in the messy relationship with Mary in all the situation, the whole thing from A to Z. God was in the midst of it. And God was in the child that Joseph knew wasn't his because that child would be the, the, the son of God the Lord Jesus Christ. God was in the, in the uncertain future that Joseph was now facing in his life, not only for he, but also for Mary. God was in the chaos of the angel's message that didn't make any sense when they uh, appeared to the shepherds out on the field and they were tending their flock. I mean, God was in the mess, and that is the message of Christmas. And realizing that God comes to dwell and all the difficulties and all the messes that we have in our life, thank God God has come not to bring a mess, but to bring a miracle. And when we receive that miracle that he has performed in our life, our life changes, hallelujah. In the mess of cancer and health problems that people are facing, you know what? God can turn that around. In the mess of mistakes and accidents and difficulty and bad decisions, God can turn those things around. In the mess of financial and job security, and so many people are facing those issues today of financial instability and loss of job, loss of revenue that affects their family, God is still in control. In the mess of loneliness and depression, you know, we think of Christmas, man, it's a great time of the year, but for many, it is a season of depression and loneliness and heartbreak over past memories. In the mess of doubts and fears, you know, you can make this promise of God that he is with us. This God who says, I'm Jehovah Shammah, the Lord who is there. You today can claim that provision and that promise. When life doesn't turn out the way that we many times think that life is going to turn out, it's okay, you know, to give up on perfection. 
Because, folks, you're living in an imperfect world and you're living in an imperfect body. But I'm glad God can take all of our perfections and bring glory and honor and praise out of it. I'm so glad today that God's with us. And that's the Christmas story. Emmanuel, God with us. This was proclaimed of Isaiah hundreds of years before Jesus came. And this same message, because here's Joseph and here's the, uh, the word of God declaring that he is going to be Emmanuel. Do you realize what that means today? God's with us. There's not a moment in life that God's not with you. There's not a situation that you can go through, face, or encounter that God's not in the midst of what is going on in your life. So God wanted Jesus born in the city of David in a place so that the decree, the mess that it created, was all a part of God's design and God's plan. Now, when they arrived in Bethlehem, and we all know the story and the account very accurately, there was no room for Joseph and Mary who was pregnant, but what did God provide? No, he didn't provide a penthouse suite. He provided a stable in Bethlehem. The first place God dwelled on the face of this earth was in the mess of a feeding trough in a manger. Jesus was placed there in a feeding trough. Isn't that amazing? But he came to feed the hungry souls of every person, to satisfy every need in our life, where we were thirsty, thank God, he became the living water. Where we were hungry, he became the living bread. He is the satisfier of your soul today. Christmas cards make the stable look very serene and beautiful. And you can just go, ha, ah. ha. Well, it was not a very attractive place. Smelly, stinky, messy. But let me tell you what, God was in the midst of it. And the stable was a mess, and everything seemingly surrounded the story was a mess. But maybe today you look, and you're looking today at your life, and it's not turned out the way that you wanted your life to turn out. It's not the way that you wanted, to, wanted it to have been. Christmas is not about perfect tables. You know, everything's got to be perfect. Everything's got to be squared off the knife, the fork, the spoon, the, the plate, all the different things, everything. Christmas is not about your perfect table lights oh i've got the perfect tree pastor oh really give it a few days and when those needles start to die and fall off oh i got that covered pastor i got an artificial tree well when you take that thing down and stick it in a box it doesn't look like when you had it up did it <laughs> all those things it's about giving up on perfection within ourselves we cannot be perfect but God can complete a perfect work in us. Amen. It's allowing God to come and dwell within us in all the difficulties and messes of our life that we encounter day in and day out. We can have that promise of his presence today. God's promise is to be with us. And you know what? Through everything, through everything that we face, we have a promise that he is always there. He never leaves us. Can you imagine that? You ever had a friend leave you, a family member leave you? Somebody turned the back on you? Man, you got a God who will never leave you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Many people have mistaken ideas, basically, that once we make the decision to follow Jesus, that everything's going to be perfect and okay in our life. That's not the case. As a matter of fact, the fact some of the greatest chaoses can come in your life after you receive the Lord as your personal Savior. But I'm glad that we have God who can work through those things to develop our faith and our walk by his grace if our life is not perfect then you know in our human sense we think oh I failed let me tell you there are no failures with God God does not make any mistakes this is not true when it comes to the Lord the story of Christmas is God comes to dwell with us did you hear that he comes to dwell with us and to give us the strength and the power to make it through everything that you're going to encounter one day we will be in the city of perfection. One day we will be with the perfect one. And one day we will be perfect as he is. But until that day shall come, don't give up on the Lord and what he can do in your life. The mess for Joseph and for Mary continued after they'd even said yes to God. I mean, Mary said, you know, 
and, and she received and she went and told Elizabeth and of course John the Baptist that was in the womb of Elizabeth who was well stricken in years also that was another miracle that the baby leaped in the womb it says hallelujah you know what we should leap with joy every time we mention the name of Jesus shouldn't we and the fact that we're children of the Most High God and we've got God on our side and even through the struggles and the trials and the dark valleys of life, we can look up and rejoice because our God has given us strength and power to overcome anything that we face. Amen. And after that, faithfully move towards trusting God. They trusted the Lord in all things. You know, if they did that, here's an example for us. We should trust the Lord through everything that we encounter in life. See, our circumstances in our day may be different than then, but our God is not. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God's love for us and God's favor today that is upon us today doesn't mean that everything will be perfect in your life. You're going to have difficulties and struggles. That's a part of living. Welcome to life. God simply says that he will give us strength and power to make it through it. And in that process, he develops us, strengthens us, builds us up, and uses us greatly for his kingdom. You don't lose with God. There is no losing situations when it comes to the Lord. If, if life for you today is disappointing and discouraging today and depressing, by all the circumstances of life that we face today, then get ready to experience the, the, the real Christmas today that God has for you. God is with us, and he will bring us through everything that we will ever encounter in this life. What a promise we have from the Lord. We have his presence and his favor upon us and with us. And that's what he brought, amen. The entire biblical story is God running to the mess of our lives and giving us the help that we need. Hallelujah. We've all had the messes of life, haven't we? We've all had struggles, haven't we? We've all been through the valleys, haven't we? But thank God God's been with us through everything that we face. I think about Adam and Eve that they made a mess of their lives. God didn't turn, turn away from them. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in the book of Genesis that God came to them. And that's what's so awesome about our God. God didn't shun them, snub them. God didn't kick them under the bus, as the old saying goes. God came to them. Of course, their sin brought consequences. But you know what? Through that, still God blessed them. When, when the world was all messed up in sin in the days of Noah... God, and the Bible says that it repented God that he made man, but you know what? God didn't give up. He spared, he spared Adam and uh, spared Noah and his wife and their three sons and their families. God didn't destroy it all, but God ran to the mess and he saved Noah. And for 120 years, Noah built an ark of safety, which is a type of Jesus, which is a type of salvation, which is a type of God's miracle in our lives today. When, when people were living in the mess of slavery, uh, God heard their cry and rescued the children of Israel from the bondage that they were in. See, God's always been there. Unfortunately, we haven't always been there for God, but God has always meticulously been there for us. And so God never turns away from his people, and he's not about to do it now. When the word says that he is a friend that will stick closer than a brother, hallelujah, you can count on God to be that. God wants to be today in, and he wants us to be in his presence. He wants us to tabernacle with him. He wants us to fellowship. He wants to pour out favor. God wants to bless us. But folks, you've got to get in the presence of God for him to pour the blessings into your life. You've got to live obediently, surrendered, sold out, sanctified, filled with God's spirit. Today, that's what God's looking for. That's what real Christmas is all about. Hallelujah. And every time I look at all the things, you know, everything, whether it's lights or whether it's trees or decorations, you can see Jesus. You really can. You see, the tree reminds you that he became sin who knew no sin. He died on the tree for you and I. And where he brings joy and he changes. I mean, you know, that tree when it was brought in here and taken out of the box and it just looked like another green old artificial tree. But uh, when they start putting decorations and lights and things change, that's the way Jesus does our life. Oh, he decorates you with his favor that people will see the presence of God in you and the power of God on you. Amen. And then God wants, wants us to be in his presence. And as we continue to make our way 
to this celebration of Christmas, you got to learn to give up on perfection. Now, don't look for the perfect Christmas tree, the perfect gift, or the perfect lights, and the perfect wreath, and all the other things that you try to find, the perfect table, the perfect clothes, the perfect this, the perfect that. Today, experience Christmas. And you can experience Christmas when you give up on perfection. And Lord, receive him into your life and crown him Lord of your life. That makes such a difference today. What imperfect circumstances are you facing in your life today? We all have them, don't we? What mess are you, your family, dealing with right now in life? Because, you know, if you don't believe that people have a mess in their life, spend five minutes on Facebook. Because <laughs> I tell you, it's the greatest advertising source today for people to air their problems and their troubles and everything else. I'm serious. I went through, and boy, I read some of the stuff, and man, I'm glad I wasn't in some of the shopping places that some of the people were in that was on Facebook yesterday because if I, if I ran into them, I don't know if I would have wanted to experience what they were. Hmm. You know? Lord have mercy. Remember, people reading this, folks, what you put out there, people are seeing it reveals your character, doesn't it? Amen. But experience God's presence. Experience God's power in the midst of all the trials and messes of life. God can use your struggles to do two things. He, one, can develop your faith walk. And that's what many times our struggles are about. God's building us up and strengthening us. That the next trial that we face, we will have even more enduring power and strength in our life. And secondly today, encourage the life of another person. Your life is a living billboard to other people. And we should try to be an example to people of the great power of our God and what he does. Don't walk around with your, your chin drooped down to your kneecaps and singing the gloom and despair song. Man, look up and rejoice in the great God whom we serve. Amen. All right, I'm going to close with this. Take the five challenge again this week. You say, preach, it's only four things. Yeah, but listen to what? The five is in the four things, okay? Take the five challenge. Take five minutes each morning to pray. Five minutes to pray each morning. Out of a 24-hour day, you can give God five minutes. Amen. Take five minutes, secondly, every evening to read the Gospel of Luke. Just do that for the, this week. Go through and read through the book of Luke and understand God's Word. Take five or find five ways that you can, that, that you can give that will make a difference. Things that you can do in the lives of other people. And then find five people to encourage and help this week. That doesn't mean you've got to go out and buy them Christmas gifts. That means you can call them, pray with them. I was on the phone this morning praying with some folks that's going through struggles. Man, what a privilege. What an honor that we have that we can bring encouragement. Each day targeting five people that we're going to bring help and encouragement to. Make you a notebook and write their names down. Do whatever it takes to make this happen in your life. Trust in God, believe in God, and no matter what you're going through, you can today stand on this promise, God is always there. Amen. With you, with us. He is Emmanuel, God with us. Hallelujah. And the church said, Amen. Thank you, Father, for time in the Word this morning. Pray that it's been an encouragement to the hearts and the lives of each person that is here. We thank you for your mighty presence and your power and your provision. Thank you for your grace. We love you today because you first lavished your love towards us. Thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you for Christmas. Lord, when people talk about getting the Christmas spirit, help them to get the Jesus spirit. Oh, Father, that will bring about what the real spirit of Christmas is about that we'll look to Jesus and rejoice that God could love us so much to give his son that we could have life and have freedom and have a home in heaven and have the presence of God. Oh, yes, you are Emmanuel, God with us. Thank you for that today. Now, Father, as we uh, have a season of worship today, may it be pleasing and honorable in your sight. May your name be exalted and glorified in the house of worship today is my prayer. And we will say to God be all glory, praise, and honor. 
In Jesus' name. And all God's servants said, amen. Now, as we do on Sunday morning, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen.